Hi, I'm Bob Schmidt with Home Remodel Workshop. This is phase two video of basement frame. If you haven't watched phase one, some of this isn't going to make sense to you, so you may want to drop back and check that out first. Let's get to work. All right, we have our two good lines that we have down the top here and down this side that we already checked with the three, four, five method. We know that it exactly messes, it matches up exactly the way we want it. Every other interior wall will be measured off of this wall or this wall, including the wall that's all the way on the opposite side of the basement against the foundation wall. It'll get measured all the way from this side also. Now, once you have all that done, you decided your basic layout, where you want everything to go, you have your doors, your unfinished area, you have everything marked on the floor. What do you do now? These lines will not stay forever. As you clean up the job, as you're working down there and your wife's helping you sweep things around, these lines will disappear. What you need to do is you need to take an indelible marker and at every single point where these, these inside and outside corners, you need to go through and make a mark with your indelible marker. After you make a mark, even, even on doorway openings, after you make a mark everywhere with your indelible marker, because you know these lines may go away, there's a product I recommend you use for the chalk lines. It's called a clear marking coat. You, you, it sprays on with the can upside down and is specifically designed for use to seal chalk lines and other temporary markings. That way, as you're working along, you know that you're not going to lose these marks on your floor and have to relay and redo all the work that you've already done. We have all our marks down on the floor. It's time to start slapping them plates down, right? Wrong. Too soon again. Now what we need to do is we need to transfer all of these marks that we have on the floor up to the ceiling. Now some people will say let's use a straight edge and a, a uh, four foot level. The only problem with that is you can be off a little bit each direction and you can make for not a straight wall. What I recommend you use is a plumb bob. Basically you hold the plumb bob up there, you make sure you have you install blocking to mark on, you hit every inside and outside corner you need to mark up onto the ceiling. Then you need to snap all of those lines up on the ceiling. Once you have all the lines on the floor and they're protected, all the lines in the ceiling and they're, well, all the lines on the ceiling, and you've double checked everything. You made sure the tub will fit in this opening, that you have plenty of room for everything then it's time to start framing the walls. Now the way I frame basement walls is a little different than some. The first thing I do is I install my treated plate down to the concrete floor. That's that green looking stuff at the, at the warehouse place that you buy your lumber from. Uh, the reason we do this is because there's moisture that'll, that's inherent that sucks up through concrete floors. Uh, you, you want to have a product down there that is moisture resistant, bug and rot resistant. The next thing I would do, now that I have all my lines up on the ceiling, is I would take my untreated 2x4 and I would put up all my top plates up on the ceiling. All of them. I wouldn't just put up a couple and get going. Now this isn't a video of how to frame. It's basically a video of how to get your walls squared up and how to get your top and bottom plates on. But with this method that I'm telling you to use, you will fit your wall studs in after you have your top and bottom plates done. Now here's something that's very critical you have to be careful of. When you lay out these wall studs, which I'm not going to tell you how to do that, there are other methods, of, there are other ways for you to find out. When you lay these wall studs out and you measure between the bottom plate and the top plate to put this wall stud in place, you can't make this wall stud too high because basically what you're doing is you're creating a wedge. If on the first floor up above, you have a tile or a solid surface and you make your wall studs too long and you drive them in there with your hammer, it will lift that floor and crack that tile. So I highly recommend that when you measure these, if it creates the slightest resistance and doesn't just drop right in there uh, to recut before you put it in, just make it so that it just perfectly fits. I know this will take some time, but by the time you're done getting all your wall studs in, 
If you can use an air nailer, that's the best because you can just shoot it into place. Uh, if not, if you're nervous about it, you can even take a, a screw gun and a screw and you can screw it into place, which will less, lessen the banging that you're doing up on the floor up above. Because vibration can also crack tiles, do things up above, damage that you don't want to cause. Now, one more thing I think that we should cover. I, I probably should have done this in the very beginning of the first video, but I'm going to do it now. After you get your space emptied out and you're walking around and you're taking a look and deciding where you want your walls and what's going on, look for those cracks in your foundation. If you have any cracks in your foundation or any water problems in your foundation, they need to be taken care of prior to you building your walls and framing everything in. It will come back to bite you later. So if you have these cracks in your wall, and even though they may not look like they've ever leaked, maybe we haven't had that monsoon in five years that's coming next summer, you may want to go ahead and take the time to call a foundation specialist. They have an injection process for cracks. It's fairly inexpensive where they, they put in a solid material that is water resistant uh, so that you're, after you get done investing thousands of dollars into this basement project, that you're not tearing it apart to repair that crack later. Now, I realize that this simple basement that I drew here probably doesn't match your basement with your offsets and where your plumbing is coming down in the way by the exterior wall where I'm telling you to chalk lines. Basically, what you need to do is you need to use the principles that I gave you here and, and apply them to your situation. In other words, if there's something in the way at four and a half, five inches off the wall and you're planning on building a little offset around it, that's fine. Go ahead and measure two, maybe even three feet off of that wall to get your first line and get that line squared up at 90 degrees. You can always measure back off that line to get your long wall in several places if you have to, getting around obstructions that you're gonna frame around later. Uh, I'm Bob Schmidt with Home Remodel Workshop. I hope you appreciate this video and get some use out of it. Uh, if not, there are many other videos back in our home channel. Please check them out. Thanks.